Welcome back, my friends, to the sweet spot where IT leaders share the insight with other leaders and others who want to lead. My name is Carlos Vargas, and as in every week, I have my two co hosts, Howard Holton and Paul Lewis. Hello, hello, guys. hello, hello. Hey there. How's everybody doing this week? Very good. 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 That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Paul, it appears we, we need a real quick way to raise a couple hundred thousand dollars. And just to blow it immediately on something. Is that, is that correct? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm looking forward to my retirement package that will. Uh... Now, imagine the family of four cost a half a million dollars to do a, a Disney World tour. Yeah. So for those who, who don't know, Disney uh, announced a kind of one time world tour opportunity for 75 people to. Uh, to board a private jet and go to every Disney park around the world uh, in a whirlwindish tour, um, which frankly sounds both amazing and like the worst possible experience. <laughs> I don't really want to be on a plane with 73, like figuring my wife being one of the people, right? With 73 other people that one, I don't know. And two are Karen enough to be able to afford the hundred thousand dollar ticket price, right? USD, so it's already a couple hundred grand Canadian there, so it's like three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars Canadian. What I thought was funny was the little disclaimer that says, you know, you should be at least 12 years old to come on this trip. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, if you're bringing kids on this trip, then you have a lot of disposable income, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean. I'm sure they put it there because they probably like they probably have plenty of people that aren't 12 that you know that would otherwise be on the trip and 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 I think if you're paying 100 grand you take whoever the hell you want exactly shouldn't matter at that point no limits yeah, yeah. like like <laughs> at that point you know, but if, but one person 100k one per each person $107,000 USD yeah mm. Now, yeah. it includes all your meals. Oh, well, in that case. <laughs> well, it has to at least the meals. It's your meals. It's your private jet for all for the 25 people. Um, all your entrance fees to the parks. Uh, that adds up. <laughs> <laughs> all your genie pluses, right? I mean, for that matter, um, have you heard Kevin Kevin Hart's bit on going to Disneyland? No. Mm, worth watching it's on netflix so he talks about how he doesn't do anything normal and his right. kids have kind of become used to it and his, he's now divorced right so they spend time with him they spend time with their with their mom right. he says like i do disneyland but i don't do disneyland like everybody else does disneyland he says i i have a private tour guide the tour guide walks us through the through the back entrance right up to the ride puts us right on the ride there's no waiting i'm right. in and out of disneyland i ride every single ride i'm done in two hours <laughs> like, we're in the car we're driving back home we're done <laughs> he says my kids call me and go dad dad can you call your person what person the person that let you cut in line yeah but i'm not there so no tell your mom i said <laughs> <laughs> i bring that up because for one hundred seven thousand dollars, you better have that private guide that's right you better be yeah. in and out of the park in two hours every ride ridden Right. And I want to ride Rise of the Resistance as many times as I want until I am sick of that ride. <laughs> so how many days does the tour take to do all the parks worldwide? Does it say? Uh, it was 27 days, 27, 29, something like that. Yeah, so you're doing more than one park a day? Yeah. It starts in California, it ends in Orlando. Right. Right. I think you've spent way, way too much time looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dream. It's a dream. I can have dreams. A dream. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we all can. We all can. Right. Yeah. Like, um, I mean, you know, if you were in Silicon Valley, you probably had a dream late last week that your, uh, that your deposits would be good, that your business would stay open. Right. Right. That the nightmare would end. Um, of course, we're talking about Silicon Valley Bank, and the the failure thereof. Do you believe it was because of their woke policies? Their woke policies? Yeah. No. You didn't know. You haven't heard that. No. No, I haven't yeah. heard that one. Yeah, that the, their woke DEI policies and their investment in 
Oh no, no I don't. Full elite consideration. Really. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't watch that news channel. I see. <laughs> I'm so, sorry. Let me let me rephrase. I don't watch that news channel. Any news channel that has to argue in front of the court that no reasonable person would take what they say as truth is not news. They are news. Got it. That's right. Air quotes. Not fake. Just news. Just news. For entertainment purposes only was the argument they made in front of the court. Right. At least the opinion side. Yeah. Just saying. So, no, I don't so, believe it was woke policy. I, 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 I mean... Uh, ultimately, um, they were they were way over over aggressive in their investment strategy, like many were. Um, yeah. They made some mistakes that caused a run on the bank, rather than giving themselves time to uh, to move to move funds from one um, one side of the house to the other side of the house, as it were, right from yeah. long term to yeah. short term, and take the hit. Um, and uh, and it and it caused a, a failure of the bank, and it was a bank where. I want to say 97.5% of the deposits were not FDIC insured. They were too large to be FDIC insured. Greater than 250. Which is a crazy thing to think about, right? Because there's not True. a lot of banks that can, that can say that, right? There's, there's, I don't know of another single bank that can say that. Yeah. It, clearly it was a, you know, a small, medium-sized business bank. That's focused on yeah. Silicon Valley startups, right? VC funded startups. Yeah. A, a thousand uh, so users are... combinator. Yeah. Yeah. Or a, th I'm sorry, know, a thousand small, startups. Small ish organizations that did all of their banking in this particular institution. Yep. Um, and if this particular institution didn't survive, then it was going to negatively affect, you know, their ability to make payroll. Those yep. are all things that are concerned. But I think it's. I think we should walk through the what happened because you know you mentioned a couple three things there, but I think the progress is interesting to talk about. Right? So if I were to describe what happened, I would say uh, previous administration changed sort of the regulatory boundary of these size organizations, not this particular organization, but smaller than biggest of the big organization to worry less about sort of stress testing of their. Well, they got rid of Todd Frank, right? Yeah, exactly. They were they didn't have to measure as much or as frequently or report that information on whether they had enough sort of cash assets for their deposits, right? Yep. Uh, so that happened. Previous administration, the inflation occurs, Fed raises rates, that infects affects the investment side of those kind of banks, right? Well, well, I think I think you're missing a step though, too, right? Okay. What's their next? deposits were higher than they've ever been before, right. and their investment um, rate was less cash on hand, more long-term investments, because it looked like a good idea at the time. Um, right. And once you declare an investment bundle a long-term investment, you can't undo a single investment. You have to undo, undo the entire bundle, which right. is a massive financial hit, um, and you then have to carry those losses on the books for that, for that, you know, that period. Now, also keep in mind, we're technologists, not financial experts. So That's don't, don't take financial advice. Yeah. Don't take financial advice. There's no financial oh, advice, right? Yeah. This is this is literally just us talking about as we understand this this kind of huge disruption. Right. Don't, you know, don't take this as go create a bank account in this particular institution. Uh, but and then lots of things happen. So Fed raises rates for reasonable inflationary reasons. Uh, and because of that, some of the lending side of the clients of SVB um, were getting some cash crunch, right? They had to use more of their cash rather than more of their lending. But at the same time, the investment side of the bank that had long-term investments like MBS, mortgage-backed security investments, were underwater. So they were facing a cash crunch in the bank. They individual clients were facing a cash crunch because they couldn't afford the lending that they had. So they right. had to use more of their cash um, in order for SVP to true up their funds. They needed to sell some of their stock, right? <laughs> they needed to create more investment for themselves. Well, All well, those three convert. things happened at the same time. Right? Well, and they needed to convert those long-term held assets into short-term held assets so they could be traded. Right. They didn't do that quick enough. 
They then made an announcement that they were doing that, which caused some panic, right? Which which led to a run on the bank, right? A run on the bank is where everybody tries to get out more money than the bank has cash on hand, which is right. the one thing a bank can't do. You can you can never give out more money than you have cash on hand, right? Or well, what happens? Right, the, the FDIC exactly. comes in and shuts you down. And in parallel, the stock of SVP crashed while yeah. there was a run on the bank. So they had both investors crashing and customers crashing at the same time. Yeah. Right. So there's a couple, three days there where the government took over the organization and said, oh, we better you know, assess what's happening here. And there's a couple choices, right? The choice could have been everybody fails, right? Bank fails, clients fail, investors fail, shareholders fail, or... Uh, okay. um, I don't think that's... I don't think that's... It was an option. Well, Anybody well, under 20, 250K was screwed. Anybody well, not, over 250K was screwed. Yeah, so you're, you're screwed, but you're not screwed, screwed. Okay, so you, so, you, so everybody, that 97% only yeah. gets 250K. The, the, the other 2.5% or whatever it was, they get all their money because they had under 250K. Okay, right, cool. Right. So, so, so 2.5% are made whole. We can, we can move on from there. Regardless, that's the FDIC insurance pays that. Right. So everybody else can get 250 and then that's it. Right. However, they're all debtors. debtors. They're, they all hold debt in the bank. bank. As the assets are sold, they're then made whole to some percentage. Right. They're not that 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 money doesn't just completely go away. Right. They're made whole to some percentage. That's how that always works. There's no bailout. There's no tax dollars. The FD, the FDIC comes in and takes over the bank and then sells off the assets to to raise capital right. and then right. attempts to make the depositors whole. To whatever percentage that looks like, yeah, but that takes time. Happens with a bankruptcy. That takes time theoretically. Yes, yes, yes. Right? And in the meantime, yeah. payroll has to be made because right? right. these are in small organizations no with people who work there. Right. Yeah, you're making. You're able to make maybe the first 250k where the payroll and nothing else. Right. right. And let's right. hope you don't have like outstanding checks that are written or deposits that you're trying to make that there's no longer an account. Like you're all anything involving cash flow is effectively stopped. Right. Right, all of the bad, and none, there's no good in stopping cash flow. Right, yeah. the executives of the organization walked out, government takes over. Right, that's yeah, <laughs> kind of the process here. Doors are locked. Right, yep. um, so so option one was everybody was screwed, option two is FDIC says, you know what, we're gonna treat this like a human problem, not a sort of corporate problem and yes the shareholders bondholders investors of the bank won't get any resolve That's right nothing. they won't they won't get any relief but the debtors the creditors certainly will in, in that organization yes yes and that was that's actually what, what was interesting about it right was the fdic was able to relatively quickly come together come come up with a plan whereby without the taxpayers covering it so we're not bailing out the bank um, they were able to come up with a plan to make every depositor whole by taking a long-term view of the assets and effectively um, barring against those assets using other assets held by the FDIC. Right. Right. And so they can make cash available now to make the depositors whole while carrying the assets that, that, Otherwise, you know, they take a bath trying to sell for the long term, um, also keeping the American people whole because the FDIC is not using, uh, you know, tax dollars to bail it out. Yeah, because having a very interesting kind of resolution. Um, and you could almost hear the collective sigh of relief coming from Silicon Valley. <laughs> yeah, because the politics of having a whole bunch of startup organizations with thousands of people working for them failing in a single day probably wasn't a good thing. Well, yeah, it's also not something that's ever supposed to happen, right? Um, right. I mean, ultimately, small business is the... Um, there's the... Uh, what's it called? Diversification that allows your economy, your, your workforce to survive. Right. right. Like, it's really, really bad when a mega corporation goes under. Right? A couple hundred thousand people and more become unemployed. Um surprisingly you do the same thing to a thousand small companies it's worse right um yeah it's much 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 worse and then you also then have to have to look at 
this came on the tail of a whole bunch of other Silicon Valley layoffs, mm -hmm. right? And then what does that do for confidence in the banking system? What does that do for confidence in the economy? What does that do for confidence in the in the um, employment market? What does that do for confidence in, in then the trickle down is the housing market? Any 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 major purchase becomes a trickle down, right? right. Um, is now the right time to buy a house? Is that an investment I want to make? Do I have the confidence to know that I'll be employed in this location for the foreseeable future? Because this is a good big sunk cost. This is house going to be worth the same or more in five years, right? right. Um, we're already we're already seeing record numbers of um, repossessions, right? Loan defaults in automobiles. We're not seeing it in houses in housing yet, but we're seeing record numbers of um, automobile defaults, right? We really don't need that to to trickle over to any other market. And the real winner here at the end of the day will be the bank who buys these assets for pennies on the dollar. For for, for sure. Uh, although hopefully <laughs> the Fed's plan, and, and as I read the Fed's, Fed's plan, there was no urgency to, to then sell the, the the assets, right? Not now, no. right, exactly. There yeah. could have been a lot of urgency. And oh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. yeah. All of them would have stepped up and said, oh, three cents? Here you go. Yeah, yeah. There's three cents. Yeah, yeah. So so it's reason. I'll make that up in interest. Been, yeah. yeah, it's reasonable to assume that they be that, that you'd be picking up for a good discount, right? Yeah. 80, 80 cents on the dollar, right? But no longer ten, you know, three to ten cents on the dollar. Do uh, we know who did that? Who did who did what? Who bought the assets? Oh no, the the assets. As far as I know, the assets haven't gone up for sale yet. And like I said, the the Fed's plan allows them to to uh, to not make that a fire sale. Yeah, it doesn't have to be as cheap as it could have been. Right. But a couple stepped up immediately. HSBC stepped up immediately and said, hey, this is this is something I'd like to invest in just to increase my portfolio in this particular geography. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Isn't and that similar to what happened with, uh, with the GameStop uh, that they lost some of their, their value on like the bank that they didn't have enough to cover? So GameStop is a really interesting um, story for those that followed it. Um, if effectively, they were being um, wholesale shorted. Their stock was being wholesale shorted, um, which on of course, purpose. on purpose. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. There are there are groups that that's what they do. They find a company that's financially weak. They mm -hmm. short the stock and they buy every option to short the stock. They hold those options. Which of course makes everybody, you know, that that sold that option motivated to to maintain it. Um, the point of which is to drive the stock value down so low that it gets delisted, which which effectively um, turns the thing into no value, giving them the ability to then sell it for parts. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, what happened in that and that and that's been done. Corporate raiders have been doing that for decades. Right. Um, what happened in that case was. Wall Street bets, some people on the Reddit sub subreddit, Wall Street bets found out about it and said, hey, this is happening. Um, let's see if we can fuck with them. That's literally what it was. No mm -hmm. one expected to make progress. And if you look at the historically, Wall Street bets does this all the time. And they always lose money. And that's actually their goal. Their goal is to mess with the system. <laughs> right. Um, in this case, however, it was GameStop. And GameStop hits a particular group of generations in a real positive way, myself included, right? It, it actually is, it's a company that has nostalgic meaning for people. I have no interest in the corporation. I don't think it's been well run for decades. At the same time, I don't really want corporate raiders to be able to tear a, tear a piece apart of GameStop. Right. And so what happened instead was millions of people got involved and bought what they could. And it didn't matter what they bought. The stock was pretty cheap and they just held it. Yep. Right. Driving up the price. price. Yeah. It started with hundreds. Then it started, with, then, then it was thousands. Right. Then it was tens of thousands. And by somewhere by that, about that point, the stock didn't, didn't continue to drop. It leveled and then started to rise because there's a whole bunch more trading volume. Yeah. At that point, everybody got involved. And the stock went from something like $5 a share to $160 a share to $250 a share to i want to say it topped out in the fours before of course there's no like nothing has changed to 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 equal that value so it started to tumble again but not to the point where the people holding the options weren't losing an absolute fortune every week right 
And at that point, their, their sunk cost is so high, they kind of have to stick with it for until they run out of money. Right. right? Until it doesn't look like it's going to tumble down to, to being worth a dollar. Um, and every single day that goes by, they're renewing options at an enormous cost in the aggregate. Right. Um, yeah. And what ended up happening was two things. One, a whole bunch of small traders made a ton of money. Um, two, GameStop was saved. St still, <laughs> you run into the ground by the by the same people that were running it into the ground yeah, before. By its own fundamentals. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Um, and three, um, a bunch of corporate raiders got smashed. Smashed hard, right? I mean, that was a multi-billion dollar mistake on their part. Um, the same exact thing immediately happened with AMC. Right? Not to the to the multiple level, but but the same same kind of corporate rating was occurring, same short selling, Wall Street bets jumped on that one. That had didn't have the like hundred X or fifty X um, multiplier that that GameStop did. It had more of like a ten X. Um, but uh, as part of that, right, AMC and GameStop both did some some internal fundraising, right? Sold off some shares, did some fundraising, gave them some more operating capital, um, and it and it hands down saved AMC. Yep. In all and three of these of circumstances, the business fundamentals were wrong, right? The leadership was doing something off or riskier than they should have done given you know what they what other decisions they could have made right? sure, they, could sure. have they were, they were reacting more to dynamics properly sure. they were arrogant yeah. they were you know yeah. under they didn't appreciate their competition yeah right. they didn't evolve their business models right yep. they blockbustered themselves all, all those are interesting and consistent i yeah. i think what's also interesting with the silicon valley bank example is that from a macro perspective, I wonder if we are investing too much in consumer good technology. Yes, we should invest in big complex technology problems, but do we need another thousand apps in the app store? Right? Do we need, is that a healthy part of the world? I don't know. I, I'm looking at that saying at some point there's too much. Um, I don't know that I necessarily agree. Um, and I don't know that we need to necessarily change our investment strategy. Right. I mean, I think, I think anyone that, that didn't see um, SVB and go, Holy crap, I need to make sure I'm diversified when, when I'm no longer insured. Um, yeah. That probably is a good wake up call. Right. Like, like if all your eggs are in that one basket, that's the 16th largest bank in the in the country. Um, and, and they failed in a day. Right. <laughs> you know, it wasn't like we saw the warning signs coming from a mile away. Right? Um, right. When the banking crisis happened. Right. And WAMU failed, which is the largest failure, SVP being the second, SVB being the second. Um, we kind of saw that coming. There wasn't a whole lot you could do about it. Yeah. But, but you could kind of see that coming. You could see kind of banking struggles coming from a long way away. And it's not like banks don't fail, but the 16th largest bank, the second largest ever bank failure, um, there should have been warning signs and there really weren't a ton of warning signs, right? Um, again, not in finance. So those who study finance and specifically study banking and, and the health of banks may have seen that coming and they right. may see more coming. But all of us saw what was coming with WAMU. But Not you don't see, win, just but you don't see from a a clientele of SVP perspective, SVB perspective, that we're over investing in non innovation in the technology side. I mean, yeah, but but is I, there really technology innovation that's coming out from the next game on the? iOS marketplace. Well, no, but that's not why they invest, right? They're not investing in invest. In, they're not investing in innovation. They're investing in capital. Like a re, it's a, just they're just looking for a return, right? Right? Can I beat the S and P five hundred by investing in fifty game companies? Well, I mean, if one of them does what Angry Birds does, then yes, the answer is sure, right? Like, like, and and they're not even thinking that all fifty of them are going to hit. They're just thinking one. All that I need is one of them to hit, and it covers all that investment, right? Um, so, you know, are we investing intelligently? I, I don't know. Like, are we creating a bit of a bubble? Uh, probably. Do we, do we need to slow it down? I, I'm not sure we do. Hmm. Right. I'm not sure. 
I'm not sure that there's an easy button to say this is this is what it should look like versus this is what it does look like. Hmm. Right. And I think it's dangerous to 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 try to do that. Um, to to you know modify the environment to invest in some things and de-invest in others because we're taking out the entrepreneurial spirit or the capitalist environment. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm I'm far less worried about the capitalist environment than I am the entrepreneurial spirit. Right. Right. Um, I think encouraging people to um to, to start companies to 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 boost the economy i think is good um i mean should we be doing more due diligence yeah yeah yeah, we, yeah without a doubt right should we invest in sm our, our money smarter um should do does the investment investor community does the vc community need to be smarter about where they put their funds absolutely right um i mean you know you can you can look at at whatever the, the new hotness is and see, you know, there's a ton of companies that, especially as a customer that you look at and you go, there's nothing here. H how did you raise $130 million? You have nothing. There's, there's right. nothing really. A here. lot of platitude in this website. Right. right. <laughs> um, and you just kind of go, okay, well, you know, that's a, that's a problem I think Silicon Valley needs to fix. Right. right? Um, or the, the investment community needs to fix, right. Is, is how, how do we make sure we're investing in, the right technology and in and in things that ultimately are better for the world right. um, and people that have interest in making a better world. That's a little bit of a pipe dream because that's not really their goal. Their goal is to make money. Right. Um, and I've seen just as many good companies be unicorns and, and hit that billion dollar valuation and sell as I have smoke and mirror companies that sell. Right. Like, you know what I mean? So it's very hard to say, don't invest in that smoke and mirror company that gives you your five or 10 or 15 or 20 or 50 X ROI. Right. Right. Cause that's not a good indicator that, that, uh, that, that you're not going to get your money back. I'm just less, um, enthusiastic about potentially a thousand small tech organizations that aren't contributing any new innovative value to, the marketplace of ideas they're just clones of gpt right they're just clones of blockchain they're just implementations without a purpose well and, i don't and there's I'm a thousand agree with you but yeah. but at the same time one there's all, all thousand of those companies are, are just it's statistically improbable that they were that right so some percentage of them probably aren't adding anything at the same time um, there has to also be some percentage of them that's that are, that are currently that start with nothing new. They just right. don't have anything new to offer. And yet, as part of their fundraising, as part of their kind of evolution as organizations, have the potential to create something new or acquire something new as part of that journey. Right. right. I am certain that the world is full of stories where, yeah, yeah, we started with smoke and mirrors and ended up building something that changed the world. Right. Right. I mean, the story of Harley Davidson is kind of smoke and mirrors, right? And yet you you can't dismiss Harley's impact on the world. And I'm not picking on Harley at all, I, I'm a fan, but but how many companies got their initial funding through pure smoke and mirrors and ended up changing the world? Hmm. You know, Enough yeah. of them for it to yeah. be a good thing. Yeah, and so they dog paddled for a while and they tread water for a while until they were able to, able to do something. And maybe they have a, an amazingly wonderful vision um, but that amazing, wonderful vision, a vision doesn't get you funded, right? right. But a clone of chat GPT gets you funded. Right. Right. So, is there any point where there's a consumption saturation? And is there any point when I look at any of the marketplaces and say, that's too much. I, I don't, I can't, oh, I can't oh. consume this. I can't, this is overwhelming. Oh, every one of them is there. Yeah. I've devalued the individual because of the mass. Yeah. No, it's, it's all there. Right. right. And, and we're there in everything, right? We, 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 we have a consumption problem everywhere. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a very casual video, video game player. And, and Carlos, you might appreciate this. I, I bought a steam deck. Like, I don't know, a million other people did. <laughs> right. I, I, I was lucky enough to get it fairly. I ordered, I, I placed my order 36 seconds after pre-orders went open. Nice. How, how I know that is because you had to know that in tracking when your order would get produced. I see. Yet I was still about four months into 
receipt of my Steam Deck. That's how that's what that volume of orders looked like within the first 36 seconds. Right? Right. Um, and I tracked it every single day. Every day, I wanted to know where am I in the queue and how far away is the queue. Not that it was helpful. It just was something I did. Um, <laughs> I am like everyone else. I got my Steam Deck, and the number one complaint wasn't this thing sucks, wasn't I don't know what to do with it. Wasn't it's failed in some way. It's it's awesome and it's it's a great piece of hardware that I could spend an entire episode talking about. My complaint was I have 500 Steam games I've never played. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, when we look at marketplaces and the 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 absolute flood of things we have coming at us. Yeah, every single marketplace in every single way is is flooded. Right. Um, and uh, Etsy, we use Etsy as an example, right? Etsy started from a really good place. How do I, t how do we take small creators that are currently only able to get any kind of, some kind of local penetration and give them a worldwide penetration? Mm -hmm. Okay. So go look at Etsy because today Etsy is 1% creator, 99% uh, outsourced junk from wherever. Right. Right. Mass produced crap that you can brand from India, Pakistan, Vietnam, China, Taiwan, right? AliExpress. Right. Right. Yeah. There's no one of a kind right. there anymore. Right. Yeah. Right. It's it's almost impossible to find the 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 small artisan handcrafted goods on Etsy. For a right. while you could use price to figure it out. Right. Oh, that price is too good to be true. And you can still kind of do that. But even some of the outsource, the, the, the dropship companies have figured out if all they do is raise their price, they're still going to make enough sales, right? Amazon, another yeah. great example. Search for any, search for an Android uh, car stereo. You'll get 57 results that are the same exact car stereo with a different logo on them. Right. You don't make any of those things, right? So are we oversaturated? Yes, absolutely every market is oversaturated. Mm -hmm. In time, you know, 1977, right? The company that that invested in Star Wars blew away the competition, right? Were there were there were there a lot of other movies to invest in? Absolutely. Did anyone expect that one to do well? No, no, no. Not even Lucas, right? Uh, the Spaghetti Westerns, another great example, right? Um, the director called Clint or Clint Eastwood's agent called Eastwood and said, "Hey, hey." have you seen variety? And he said, no. And he goes, well, go open variety. And he opened it and he goes, uh, okay, cool. There's an Italian movie. That's, that's absolutely kicking ass. Why do I care? And he went dummy. That's your movie. <laughs> no one expected that to happen. They were, it was a cheesy movie. Jaws, same thing. No one expected that, that to happen. No one expected Facebook or Amazon to be as big as they were. Right. Um, one of my favorite stories is, um, is it Parker Warbley? The what's the glasses company called? Like Warburg oh, yeah. or something. Anyways, um, there's a guy that gives a really good talk on how he re on how those guys came to him and said, "Hey, we need this money." And he said, "Cool. What are you gonna do with it? Like, what what's your plan?" And they're like, "Oh, we're gonna work in our day jobs while we get this thing off the ground." And he said, "No, I'm not gonna invest in you. I won't invest in anybody that doesn't dedicate 100 percent of themselves." He said, "Now they're worth like five billion dollars. I'd have made 100 to one, right? Like that happens all the time." Um, and you kind of, you kind of have to invest in a hundred to hope that one's going to hit or a thousand to hope that one's going to hit. And I, I, I'm, I'm just concerned that if we say we need to be a whole lot more conservative because the marketplace is buried, um, that we're going to miss out on those things that truly are innovative, that those things that truly are useful. It's much more difficult to find the needle in a haystack when there's hundreds of haystacks. It's, it's hard to find the needle early, right? It's much easier to find the needle when it's no longer the needle, right? Like if you're not, if you weren't an early adopter of Amazon, yeah, you could have totally missed it. You could have just gone to Barnes and Noble or your local bookstore forever. And yeah. then one day, all of a sudden you're hit by this, by that big smile logo and you can't miss it. Facebook, same thing, right? Like that, that, but, but again, that happens all the time, right? There's a thousand, there were a thousand Facebook competitors. There were a thousand Reddit competitors. There were a thousand, I, I don't, you know, insert whatever. Eventually, there's not. Yeah. Right. And and to circle the conversation, did you know that the around the world tour at Disney includes a night at the Lucasfilm Ranch? I, I did not. <laughs> it actually changes how I think about it just just slightly. I still don't have a hundred and ten thousand dollars. 
<laughs> nor would that be how I spent 110,000. Like that buys a really nice car. <laughs> right. And it's, you're not going by yourself. So it's $250,000. Oh no no! My wife's tickets on my wife. I don't know how she's. Meet you at the airport if you can afford it. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Sorry, babe. Gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you would be divorced by the time you got home, but right, but you'd have a great trip. Yeah, yeah. locks to be changed in three and a half minutes. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't even make it to the airport. Locksmith's already over changing the locks on your house. <laughs> well, ma'am. So, do you need two Girl, keys for that? No, one is fine. One is fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> so if, if we take a look at after this whole conversation, what should IT leaders pay attention to? Diversification. And it's not the first time we've talked about diversification, right? A, a year ago or two years ago, we talked about supply chain issues during COVID. So, you know, right, probably two years ago. And, and my recommendation was the same then. It was diversification, right? If I learned anything from the supply chain issues of COVID, it was I cannot depend on one supplier for anything in my organization. So I need to have at least two options. I need to be diversified. Even if it's only 20%, I still need to be diversified. And the same is true within banking, right? Diversification is, is what you need to do within your career, within your knowledge base, within your experience, right? Diversification is is always a smart play. Yeah. The only exception, of course, is hotel and airline loyalty. But yeah, <laughs> I agree with everything Howard just said. That is, that is, that is true. <laughs> if you have the, like, if you, travel, <laughs> you can get top tier status on three airlines, I say do it. Whole different situation. I agree. Right. If that's, right. if that's possible, then right. yes. But yes, but yes, that is absolutely a cup you fill until it is full before looking at another cup or bucket. Right. Yeah. But I will say as someone that was able to fill two of them uh, to the, to the brim in multiple years, it's absolutely cool to do. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Only if you could transfer the points between them all, because you want to be able to use them for personal vacations and you don't want to split the family up. Uh, it actually worked out really well for me. I filled Southwest yeah. multiple years and United multiple years. If I yeah. go on a trip, it tends to be United. If I send someone else on a trip, I tend to use Southwest. <laughs> you Spirit Airlines, me, yeah, kind of <laughs> first class, yeah, kind of. You want me to pay for the flight? Oh, yeah, 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 you're gonna use the the, the Southwest. <laughs> and I and I'll fly Southwest as well, but Southwest is generally a kind of short leg versus United is right. what I reserve for long legs. So I, ho I hope it's going where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> If not, I would, within driving distance of where you're I, I kind of figure 80%, if I can get you, like, since I'm paying for it, if I can get you 80% by flight and you have to hoof it and thumb it for 20%, <laughs> it's still a net win. <laughs> right. That's a good win. <laughs> I'll get you to Europe, but you're going to find your way to Berlin. Right, right, right. Well, it's Southwest, so I can get you to Mexico. The rest of Europe, right. the boat's on you. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, that was a good chat. Understanding that as leaders, we need to understand the diversification so we can be ready in case of something happened is actually always a good idea. My friends, make sure that you share, you subscribe, and we'll see you on our next episode.